and welcome back to the Earth on Survival Guide, a podcast for all disciplines, paths, players, and game masters, and enthusiasts like Josh and myself. I am Dan. I am Josh. And on today's podcast, we will be discussing all things theological and ecumenical. We are wrapping up part six of our six part series on passions and questers. So, yeah, this is the last one. Episode 70. Do you believe it? Episode 70? We're, we've been here this long? <laughs> yeah. Doing it all this in, this entire time. And next episode, we'll get to when we get there. But otherwise, folks, if you have any questions for us about anything you hear about today on the podcast, we uh, are available to be reached at edsgpodcast at gmail.com. But we're going to talk about low coast and then the last of our mad passions, Vestrial. Yes. Wicked, wicked Vestrial. Yeah, low coast is one of the favored passions, I think. I know a lot of orcs love low coast, and he is at constant war with Dis is also something to be uh, known about. Because, uh, again, people were asking for like a low coast versus Dis episode, and that wasn't going to happen. So low coast... The passion himself is a has the ideals of rebellion and change and freedom. And the little tiny mini essay in the player's guide also mentioned that Locos likes new discoveries and pro making progress over past assumptions and throwing off shackles of, of past behaviors and practices and things like that. So anyway, um, what are your initial thoughts on, on Locos the passion there, Josh? Um, <laughs> Locos is pretty interesting. As you mentioned, kind of a popular one after Garland. Thestonius. After Thestonius. Yeah. Locos tends to be, at least with certain styles of campaign, tends to be associated most strongly with adventurer types. If yeah. you've got a game that's going to be dealing directly or indirectly with slavery and the Theron Empire, Locos is a passion that is likely to make themselves known fairly early, uh, fairly frequently. Yeah. Because of their opposition to slavery. Totally. There's also the sense of adventurers and adepts kind of in general and players of Earth Dawn mm -hmm. in general, tending towards being freelancers and troubleshooters and things like that, having that freedom of movement, that ability to go and kind of enact change and so forth has some thematic connections that can be brought in with regards to low coast one way or the other. Absolutely. So the elements that are associated with this passion are uh, a strong wind. Cause of course, wind, you know, wind never settles in one place for very long and the winds of change. There you are. Thank you. Uh, the scorpions, just kidding. Uh, up also uprooted trees, which I think is the, uh, change. And the fact that you're throwing off things from the past and that you are not stuck in one place anymore. And then open gates, because you, of course, burst that open to any kind of protection and um, the evening out of opposing parties uh, from different sides of, of, an, of an argument or something like that. So I think this is more your activists mm -hmm. who are seeking kind of inequality along the way. So the powers that low coast has himself are to, of course, naturally inspire rebellion, comfort the imprisoned, unlock doors and can transform into wind. So pretty straightforward. I mean, there's no, there's not a lot of bad interpretation of any of those really. Um, it's just the fact that yeah, low coast is there for, um, yeah, just getting things to change, not to drag people down, and just say, well, I want it this way. This is changed for the better, to improve your station. At least in theory. At least in theory. We get to the to the maybe misuse of some questers later on. <laughs> well, as as history teaches us, yeah. the best intentioned rebellions do not always result in the best results for everybody. Yeah. Take a look at the terrors of the French Revolution post the death of Louis the 16th and prior to the ascension of Napoleon, mm -hmm. the decade or two in there with, and um, what was going on with Robespierre and all that sort of thing. Yes. Great lofty ideals and, and notions of freedom and throwing off the, the shackles of 
conservatism and monarchy and religion and so forth. <laughs> and, you know, the Enlightenment ideals and so forth that were carrying on and the the notions that they were inspired by the independence of the American colonies from Britain and all of the stuff that went along with that and some some really awful stuff yeah kind of came about as a result of that so i think the questers if you're going to become one typically or at least should typify really are trying to pursue an equality among peoples i don't even know classes. that that's necessarily fair required no i didn't say required but as an idea it was an overarching idea depending on the society and here's one of the things about low cost as a passion yeah as a as the ideal of rebellion and change mm -hmm. is that there are always going to be individuals who are dissatisfied mm -hmm. with the status quo of a society yeah even if the society is to some extent egalitarian mm -hmm. or enlightened or progressive or whatever yeah there are going to be those who are not satisfied with that for whatever reason or just don't like it whether that's because <laughs> their own circumstances have resulted in a situation where they are downtrodden even if they are not necessarily anti the ideal you know the general ideas of the culture mm -hmm. There, you know, there are going to be haves and have nots and, and that sort of thing. Yes. Especially when you're talking about a society, most of the societies that you're, that you're going to encounter in bar safe. Mm -hmm. Certainly the larger ones. Thrall, Travar, Jerus, Europa, Gratis, yeah. Iopos, Haven. You know, there, there are going mm -hmm. to be aspects of that regardless of how the civil structure or the society may be set up. People who are not happy with that. And Locust is a passion that is going to be drawn to and inspired by the desires of those people to change or overthrow or uproot mm -hmm. that society. Whatever the end result of that may end up being. I, mean, I just mentioned the, the French Revolution <laughs> and the terror. Yeah. However idealistic or noble or positive the intentions – of what's going on. Yeah. There is definitely the potential for it to go Wrong. badly. Yes. And so that is a line that player character devotees or questors of low cost may like the player may want to keep that in mind in terms of what's going on. Mm -hmm. The game master can certainly use that as a, uh, a, uh, plot hook or situation upturner way to, to shake things up is to have what is ostensibly a decent situation, a good situation, get overturned or threatened by someone who is inspired by low cost. Yeah. Because ultimately, in some re in many regards, as we've talked about with some of these other passions, the, the passions themselves don't play favorites they don't play politics mm -mm. they don't generally take sides locust would have been ostensibly on the side of thrall in its attempts to boot out the theron empire because yeah. that uproots that destabilizes that brings change to bar save mm -hmm. because of the change of the status quo in the situation there and to a certain extent because of locust rivalry with dis and dis's presence as a strong patron of the Theron Empire, that certainly plays into things as well. But once that goal is achieved, once that change has happened, mm -hmm. Low Coast is going to start looking to inspire the next change. And now you look at the situation with perhaps Thrall being the one in power. Yeah. What's going to happen? What's the step that's going to potentially be a movement against Thrall? Like, what is ultimately the end goal of this cycle? Rebellion and change. Of rebellion and change. Because, yeah, Locos' main other ideal is freedom. So he's never going to be on the side of, of rebellion for oppression or for authoritarianism, because that reduces 
people's freedoms. He's always going to be on the side of more freedom is better. Potentially, yeah. Yeah. Like I said, those, 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 those are the three main ideas. I mean, there, there so. is, there is, because of the freedom, there, there does tend to be an interpretation, particularly from our yes. perspective, of that being a kind of progressive, more open mm-hmm. society and that sort of thing. But to kind of bring in the themes that we've had through a lot of these of how oh, yeah. can a devotee or questor of a passion go too far or go wrong mm-hmm. so that you are looking at questors in particular, but the passions as well as sources of story and conflict and adventure. Yes. And not falling back necessarily always onto the, oh, we've got the three mad passions, the three evil ones, and mm-hmm. we're going to be going and, and routing out yeah. cults and so forth. Not that there's anything wrong with that. There's no. absolutely Those phenomenal just... to go and, and Obvious. you know, punch evil cults <laughs> in the face. <laughs> yes. But the storytelling potential, the narrative potential, the morality plays, the... The better certain sense of drama as far as... The potential drama situations, the dramatic situations that you can have the moral quandaries I was that could potentially exactly arise. I that exact same phrase, moral quandaries for the players. Where you've got your player characters, your adepts, your heroes, ostensibly on the side of good. Mm-hmm. They help. Coming into conflict with a questor or an organization that is devoted to Locost, mm-hmm. working towards something that they may not be super into. Yeah. And, you know, low cost being generally seen as a positive influence, as a positive mm-hmm. passion, as something that is better for society and supportive of society as a whole. Yes. What's the situation? You know, what are you going to run into as potential conflicts and difficult situations? Yes, because they might in that see circumstance. Uh, low cost's ideal of freedom as, well, nobody's in charge. Period. Everybody's free to do whatever they want. No rules to society. So this is how somebody could take it a smidge too far and just say, well, then we shouldn't have any government at all. And there's your overthrow. (laughs) There's your rebellion. There's your change. There's your freedom. Period. So that could be... But then at the same time, you can have... Yeah. Allies and so forth that that are devotees or questors of Locust being involved in places like... Iobos, yes, where there would be a very strong desire mm-hmm. to overthrow the authoritarian status quo situation <laughs> there, whether you are playing before or after the death of Ul. Yes. Iopos as a society is not going to change that drastically mm-hmm. when all is said and done. Or Jerus, where Jerus is under occupation by Iopos, and one of the story arcs in the now Empty available Thrones. Empty Thrones is <laughs> shameless plug <laughs> is the attempts by Jerus and organizations within Jerus to kick Iopos out to regain some of their freedom as a political entity rather than being in thrall to the Denerastus clan. Yeah. Uh, I love our little side jaunt on all of low coast. It's a fun topic of conversation to see where all these passions fit in. We haven't even talked about the Lady of Chains yet. No, we haven't even talked about the essay in there. Please feel free, Josh. The essay <laughs> is great. Is great. <laughs> that one was written by Anthony Jennings. Mm-hmm. And he just did a fantastic job doing a take on Low Coast, much like I wanted to do with so many of the passions. Yes. Or with several of the passions in the mm-hmm. book to take a different approach to them, Mm -hmm. to do a slant, to do a point of view of them, of an individual that follows them. Yeah. That makes you kind of scrunch up your face and go, I'm not sure how I feel about this. (laughs) If you haven't read the Low Coast essay in the Questor's book. Also available, by the way, in the Questor's book. Yeah, in, in the Questor's book. It is an essay written by someone known as the Lady of Chains, Mm -hmm. whose entire thing is breaking chains. And it expands the idea from being just slavery to breaking chains of thought patterns, breaking chains of ideas, 
basically liberating people from mm -hmm. anything. Yes. And there is a very strong indication towards the end of the essay that she is a serial killer <laughs> after a fashion, <laughs> mainly killing slavers. Yes. And trying to teach empathy, teach them a lesson to teach them the empathy or to put them in the position mm -hmm. where they are the ones that are subjugated. Yes. And See whether that can free them <laughs> or whether and and what kind of what kind of freedom is she talking about? Mm -hmm. Anyway, she is a she is a dark and scary lady. And I really, <laughs> really like that essay. <laughs> you know, it's kind of like kind of like a, in much the same way, because Anthony also wrote the Corollis essay mm -hmm. and how those those chapters kind of take a passion that somebody might take for granted or not think too much about or think that you present already them know with an approach through and through. Yeah. And present them with, with a take with an approach that makes you go, Hmm. Huh. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't think about that aspect of that one. Makes you think a little bit. And further. of course there are, there are comments on a couple of comments in the lady of chains chapter that have people going, dude, this is messed up. <laughs> Because yes. it is kind of messed up, but that's part of the reason why I like it. Anyway. Yeah. It's it's great. Fair. As you said, this is like our third or fourth po more popular passion to introduce. And one of the easier ones we think to introduce. Uh, because, as we said, Locos is about rebellion and change and freedom. How would a game master introduce either the concept of Locos or the devotees or even introduce a quester to the party and introduce the concept of in their campaign. Well, we've already touched on some of that in the course bit. of our discussion. Yeah. Any any kind of situation where you are going to have individuals that are looking to upset the status quo, mm -hmm. whether that is positive or negative in relation to the position of the player characters, yeah, can be brought into play. Certainly, there's the possibility of having questors or, or devotees of Locos. You talked about activists and so forth mm -hmm. being the rabble rouser, the individual standing on the soapbox at the corner with their speech and, and tirades about mm -hmm. whatever kind of ills or oppression or whatever that might be going on in the particular society. You are not as likely to see questors of low coast or devotees of low coast mm -hmm. in smaller communities. They would tend to be drawn more towards larger ones where the abuses of those in power mm -hmm. can be called out and used to urge on the less fortunate to seize yeah. that freedom for themselves and to upset the status quo. Fair. Obviously, if you've got a, a game that's going to involve slavery in any way, that's pretty straightforward. <laughs> that's easy. <clears throat> that, that's like, an, that's an easy one. Easy sell. But there are plenty of situations. I mentioned Jairus. Yes. For example, another place that you could see some interest in low coast. Again, going back to Empty Thrones, free mm -hmm. water. Uh, the conflict that's kind of going on there between Carafad and Landis and whatnot. Yeah. Something that a quest or a devotee of Locos could potentially be interested in. Mm -hmm. Any kind of anarchic individual. And there's a paradox in a sense. Like if we were to think of an individual who in some respects, without being a questor, yeah. but seems to embody the devotions, the the ideals of Locos in a sense, mm -hmm. Garthic One Eye comes immediately to mind. <laughs> <laughs> and yet he is at the same time, you know, as the as the epitome of the selfish thief, he mm -hmm. is the he in some respects is the ideal freedom not tied down to anything, certainly as he is presented in the longing ring. Yes. Very few connections to anyone, very little in terms of anything but self-interest, which is largely driven by his thief philosophy as opposed to mm -hmm. being a locos thing. But yeah. there is a lot of resonance with locos in there. Mm hmm. But he ends up in a situation as magistrate of 
Kratos, where he is responsible for the survival and well-being, at least of his followers, mm-hmm. if not more broadly, sort of the the city it's as a, a whole. Yeah. And there's that tension, like that could come into play. Again, we have a plot line about that in Empty Thrones. <laughs> I am not intentionally <laughs> plugging Empty Thrones, no, but, but as a, a campaign of... setting, part of the goal of the, of the <laughs> places that we created for that yeah. was to create areas where there is a tension there is a situation that is in a kind of precarious balance mm-hmm. but we we present kind of a conflict and then something happens the player characters are introduced and that depending on their actions that balance can be shifted or or uprooted yeah and that is something that locust would be interested in in the thick of things yeah fair so uh let's say you have somebody who's going to become a quester for low coast. Uh, they've played the character long enough. They're like, yep, this is a guy I agree with. Let's go uh, whole hog. And what kind of powers can you possibly get for your devotion to this passion? Uh, we, of course, have the follower levels, one, two, three, and four. We've got the adherent uh, levels, ranks five, six, seven, and eight. And the exemplar ranks nine, 10, 11, and 12. So these are all the talents you can get. Um, or sorry, all the powers you can get when you start questing for low coast. The follower devotions, you have Battle Shout, which we have talked about many a time. And I think Break Shackles, that sounds new to me. Yes. Break Shackles allows the target of the devotion Mm -hmm. to be able to break free of literal shackles or bonds. Gotcha infuses them with the mystical strength of Locust, providing them bonuses to escape such things. Nice. Uh, and then you get First Impression, Graceful Exit, which is always wonderful, Heartening Laugh, Passion's Comfort, which we have mentioned, because uh, I think everyone gets Passion's Comfort, uh, at least just about, uh, Passion's Empowerment, Passion's Insight, Resist Influence, and Silence Influence. So really those last two are to keep any other passion from influencing the person you're targeting. Yeah. Silence influence, I think, is available earlier for Locos than it is for any other passion without actually going back to look specifically. But that's because the the whole idea of silence influence is to stop the ongoing effect of Questor powers on other individuals, which is something – Questor powers are, in a way, an imposition, mm-hmm. a, a binding on the target. And so Locust would be able to, in theory at least, more easily disrupt yes. or remove those. Yeah. Uh, Garland doesn't get it till the Inherent Devotion level. And I'm trying to look up anybody else really quickly, but I'm failing miserably. So there we are. Uh, so on to the Inherent Devotion. I mean, nothing really stands out as far as the follower devotions other than the Break Shackles because – a lot more like social. they get social stuff like the other quest stores often do, but yeah. theirs tend to be more active mm-hmm. battle shout, heartening, heartening laugh. laugh and first you know, impression resist still. influence, graceful exit. Those are, are a little bit more active, which kind of plays into their idea of being activists and, and seeking to break chains and liberate mm-hmm. people from the bonds, literal or metaphorical that may Hold them down. Hold them down, yes. Yeah. So the Adherent Devotions, again, ranks five, six, seven, and eight. You have Assess Intentions, which I know we've covered at least once before. Yeah, we have covered before. It's a knack. Defiant Shout, which I believe this is the first time we've covered this. Defiant Shout is a knack, can be used on any valid target. So it's probably based off of, yeah, it's a Battle Shout knack, the target of... Defiant Shout is prevented from using any fear-based abilities. Wow. So it locks down Battle Shout, Frighten, and it can be used on any target. Yeah. Which means that it actually could be used against horror powers. Very cool. For one round per success. Worth it. Worth it. And then Encouraging Oratory, which I know we've heard before, but this is a very social-based quester. And then in, uh, Inspired Might, I think, is... Inspired Might, we've run into a yeah. couple of times before. Um, that's the one that um, gives the targets bonuses to doing strength stuff. Stuff, yep. 
uh, leadership, because, of course, Locust's questers should have leadership. Just a big duh. Lionheart, naturally. Another f- a fear resistance ability. Yep. Totally. Open Mind, which I know we covered under Minbruge. And then Passion's Inspiration, which I think almost every um, adherent devotion gets, if not them or the, the exemplar. Uh, so yeah, Passion's Inspiration. So onto the exemplar devotions. Diplomacy, which sounds a little odd for low coast, being, eh, they have to have a little bit of diplomacy. Not to- yeah, I mean... Ultimately, like with the with the ideas of freedom, some of the one of the things that's given as an example for an act of devotion for Questors of Locos mm-hmm. is to organize a group of people. Yes. Like for, to form a, a union or things like that, you know, with the purpose of improving their lot in life. Mm-hmm. And that may require diplomacy. Yes. Locos is not necessarily automatically a Molotov throwing anarchist. <laughs> True. <laughs> you know, that is an extreme end. Yeah. But there is certainly the possibility that a quester of Locos, if you're in a situation where, you know, you've got a group of workers that are being exploited mm-hmm. or the like by an employer, whether that is a merchant caravan company in Thrall or a merchant the, prince in Trevar or the, whatever. The Erastus clan, you know. If the the workers are united and able to stand together to improve their mm-hmm. lot collectively against the power that is keeping them down, yeah. that is something that, that Locust would support. Even if ultimately they continue to be employed, they continue to have this job, but as long as they are doing so on kind of a, an egalitarian situation, mm-hmm. that is absolutely something that would potentially be supported. And so diplomacy ultimately is about Forging compromise is about, you know, working between parties that are in dispute to find a common ground and a solution. Yes. That is something that a questor of low cost could conceivably be devoted towards. Totally. Uh, and then Enchanted Gift, which I know we covered under Corollas. Yeah, we've covered that a couple of times. It basically allows the questor to seed the means by which they can achieve their goals Mm -hmm. with a given target. Yeah. Uh, Having the target be more open to the influence of the ideals that the passion is in favor of. Yes. And then naturally, incite rebellion. I mean, we've been talking about that the whole time. Yes. (laughs) Incite rebellion is a new one. I think Locust is, I think, maybe the only one that gets that. I think you are correct. Because it is a long... Long description. The questor kind of makes an enchanted object that prompts people to be more open to changing the status quo and Mm -hmm. ideals and actions and get bonuses and modifiers to their actions, depending on whether they are working towards or against that goal. Yes. Uh, And they get three more. Intimidating Bellow, which I believe goes along with Battle Bellow. Might just be a knack off of that. Uh, Rally, which is always fun. And then Safe Thought. All of which we've we've talked about before. So, uh, yeah. I don't personally have a character I've played that would be a uh, devotee or even begin questing for Low Coast. But I do know I have a player who plays nothing but orcs. And... Uh, any mention of slavery gets his gahad going, and I have a feeling that one or two of his characters that he plays in different campaigns uh, for different game masters definitely would be following in the path of becoming a quester for low coast. So, as you said, it's at the top four right there of ease to bring in, ease to follow, and you know you can you can bait that hook rather easily to get someone to play for low coast. Any final thoughts on this passion? No, I think we've covered all of the uh, yeah. the important stuff. Got a nice little deep dive into that one there. So uh, we'll pause now. Just kidding. We won't pause. Right on to the last of our mad passions, the three of the 12, Vestrial. I remember doing a Legends of Earthdawn uh, story with the Legends where they talked about um, Wicked Vestrial, um, Mad Smiling Vestrial, that he has always had this plan going on and all the other passions taken care of, but they didn't have a plan for Vestrial. So <laughs> it's one of those things. Vestrial is before the scourge was the trickster and prankster 
uh, passion, but after the scourge was corrupted and gone insane and has now become the passion of manipulation and deceit. So lies. Yeah. There's in (laughs) some ways less of a change that happened with Vestrial compared to the other mad passions Mm -hmm. with regards to the corruption and twisting of their original ideals. Yeah. I mean, there's always been something a little bit dark, (laughs) always something a little bit off about trickster deities in general. Mm -hmm. I mean, you look at Coyote, you look at Loki, Loki, you look at Anansi, Mm -hmm. trickster gods, trickster deities in general always kind of already operate in this kind of shaky space of it's a tenuous grip on yeah like a kind of gray area <laughs> of stuff of the right for stuff lack of a better term or the moral yeah i mean always ultimately for the most part tending to provide a a moral tending to provide an example a, a way of pricking the pride of those in power mm-hmm. of recognizing the value of cleverness and guile um, as opposed to brute force yes, or strength of arms or diplomacy, as we mentioned five minutes ago. So there, there is that aspect. And so Vestrial filled that role in a sense in the, the pre-scourge pantheon of bar mm-hmm. save. Yeah. The corruption of Vestrial during the scourge, the madness that has inflicted him, he is still, in some respects, a trickster passion. He is still devoted to those same kind of ideals. They're just a lot darker. (laughs) They're now generally involved rather than deception and trickery for the sake of teaching moral lessons or to put the proud in their place. Yeah. That it is now for potentially the accumulation of power Mm -hmm. or the accumulation of secrets for secrets sake. Accumulation of secrets for exploitation. Or exploitation or manipulation simply for manipulation's sake. Yes. That it has become the realm of the con artist it is because he has become the the realm swindler of the spy master mm-hmm. of that kind of thing yeah and often associated along with that f- with assassination and murder although not quite to the extent that you might consider but just in general yeah that aspect of things and there is some question how corrupt how mad is vestrial mm-hmm. vestrial who who always had a plan vestrial who was the cunning one the one who was thinking more, you know several steps ahead of mm-hmm. everybody else yes is it possible that vestrial is in fact playing a long con in a sense against the horrors that's a fascinating question that is and then of course my response to that is well you know sometimes the expression fake it till you make it mm-hmm. is not without meaning. Yeah. That if you play a role long enough, you sometimes can forget that you're playing a role. Yeah. You've missed the forest for all these trees you're walking by. Very possible. So the elements that Vestrial is associated with, as you mentioned, assassination or murder, the assassin's dagger, blood, which is, uh, this is our second passion, I think, that has to do with blood. Uh, and then ambush, which is that surprise trickster type thing, but usually with a, a darker bent to it. Right. As you mentioned. And the powers that Vestrial has uh, himself, to confuse, to beguile with lies, to discover your deepest desire, or anyone's deepest desire, and to travel within a mile to anyone who has uttered a lie. I love that little twist on just traveling quickly because all the passions can travel rather quickly and, you know, instantaneously go somewhere. But this is just the one to anyone who's uttered a lie. That's the little hook at the end. That's just that little slightly darker bit to that power. It's an interesting um, thing to bring up. So I think if you're going to be a quester, now this is, like I said, 
Is it mad? Is it not mad? Believe mostly it's lent to believe mad passion. It says so in the book. Um, I think this is for questers or people or devotees who are there to find secrets, exploit them, blackmail. Am I off base or is there anything you want to add to that? No, I think that's that's fair. One of the pop culture examples that kind of springs to mind Mm -hmm. is Nick Fury in the Marvel Cinematic Universe. Fair. As the kind of spy master, as the... Keeper of One secrets. who keeps secrets and uses them in a heroic fashion for the most part, mm-hmm. but plays his cards very close to to the vest in terms of what he knows and what he has going on. And when he chooses to divulge that. One can debate based on what is shown on screen in the various Marvel properties, how good he actually is at it. Yeah. But it is generally accepted that Fury is kind of the, the super spy. The spy of all spies. Of the Marvel universe. Mm-hmm. So that's something like that's a possibility. You could see the intelligence agents for Thrall mm-hmm. or the like could have a thematic connection and potentially be uh, susceptible to the influence of Vestrial. Yeah. Any kind of intelligence gathering community or counterintelligence mm-hmm. where secrets and the keeping of secrets and the discovering of other secrets is important. The the influence of Vestrial as a mad passion could cause problems for any kind of organization in, in that role. Yeah. Ultimately. But of course, Vestrial as the keeper of secrets is in a sense, the, his followers are sort of the ultimate secret society. The very fact that they exist Mm -hmm. would kind of be, be kept secret (laughs) and your shadowy cabal of individuals looking to control things from the shadows, the cult of old people from the movie hot fuzz. There's a very (laughs) vestrial kind of thing about that. Anything like that, a a, a ring of assassins, you know, any kind of Mm -hmm. organization that strives to control or manipulate from behind the scenes is something that could be associated with or devoted to Vestrial to a greater or lesser extent. And I think the discussions about whether Vestrial is actually mad are an interesting sort of academic exercise. Mm -hmm. Personally, I prefer that discussion to be something that followers of Vestrial use as a justification or excuse for what they are doing. Yeah, fair. I don't know. I lost my train of thought there. That's fine. So as we've done with everybody else, how, aside from being just evil story foil, Questor of Vestrial or Vestrial himself, the bad guy for your plot line, how would you work in or how would somebody else work in Vestrial as an idea or a concept for their campaign or, and then secondly, secondarily, we'll get to, uh, what if somebody approaches the game master and says, I think I want to be a quester for Vestrial. Well, as we've mentioned with the other mad passions, if you've got a player character that wants to explore devotion to a mad passion, of course, it's certainly possible, Mm -hmm. but it's something that you want to be careful about. Yes. Don't wait into it lightly. Each of them have their own potential problems because you are ultimately looking at a situation where, much like dealing with horrors, the closer and more devoted you are to a mad passion, the more that's going to warp your perceptions and your beliefs and your ideals. Mm -hmm. And you are looking at a situation where your character is potentially going to become the villain, which is fine if that's what you want to do. And it's got a lot of cool story potential there. Yes. I think it's, it's, it's cool, but it is something, again, if you're playing in a group, you want to make sure that the rest of the group is down with it and is willing to kind of go along on that side arc in Mm -hmm. order to potentially explore that. If you're doing a one-on-one game, like one, one GM, one player, that is absolutely something that is a lot more easier to explore in that regard because you don't necessarily need to take the desires and considerations of the other players into into account. account. But much like any of the mad passions, it can be 
difficult, and I don't know that you necessarily need to do a lot of work to, out of character, Mm -hmm. justify what's going on. You may want to come up with in-character justifications for why they do what they do. A lot of times it is because of a warped perception or because of experiences that have broken somebody in some way. But I think Questors of Vestrial serve can serve as really good foils. Yeah. It's certainly possible. I mean, we talked about Locust being a sponsor or one who is in favor of of shaking up or uprooting sta- the status quo. Mm-hmm. Could absolutely see a Questor of Vestrial as a mastermind, mm-hmm. as a manipulator, a secret villain who might be sponsoring the player characters to do things that might ostensibly be presented as positive goals in favor of another passion, but that are lies and deceptions and manipulations to achieve their own ends with the ultimate goal, ideally from a gameplay standpoint of discovering the truth of that and perhaps needing to uproot or deal with that opposition, that adversary that has suddenly revealed themselves, especially if they've been working with the group and have a lot of intel about what's going on, (laughs) they can potentially do things to manipulate situation for their own benefit. Yeah. So what was your big takeaway from the essay, Vestrial Revealed? It was pretty good. Yeah. Since we've talked about the essays and all the other ones, including mine. So don't want to let this one slide for whoever wrote it. It is... Another example of someone who is devoted to the passion presenting the justification for yeah. why their patron is not as bad as the propaganda makes them out to be. <laughs> yeah, I took it as the, I'm altruistic, here's why. And you're like- Yeah, basically you- it's like everybody lies all the time. I don't know why you're making such a big deal out of it. <laughs> Playing on the old trickster ideals- mm-hmm. And those sorts of things. And then the other thing that you need to keep in mind, out of all of the essays, like all of the essays obviously are written by somebody who is a questor yes. of that passion. Mm-hmm. You are talking to someone who is a questor of the passion of lies and deceit. Yes. Most of the other essays you can trust More for the most part that they are sincere, that they are giving an honest presentation yes. of their stuff with a vestrial. <laughs> you can't trust what the Questor of Vestrial is telling you about Vestrial. Ever. Or about anything. Yeah. But it's presenting the, the justification of why it's not that big a deal, and everybody follows Vestrial anyway, and Vestrial mm-hmm. is just as important as all of the others. Yes. And you're just too closed minded and short sighted to see it. And mm-hmm. there. <laughs> there you go. So yeah, I figured we'd bring up the essay because again, we've touched on all the essays beforehand and their aspect of introducing the passion and what a quester might be following for there. So the questers themselves uh, are also, you know, are there to possibly, you know, manipulate other people as well. And basically their, their devotions, it's just some of their devotions that they can possibly do are to instigate other people to do you know, things that are illegal, that are against their better nature because they're there to manipulate and cause deceit and therefore crimes are deceitful. There you are. Um, so we should probably get into the powers that the, um, questers of Vestrial are handed once Vestrial, uh, deems them worthy to do so. And once again, the follower devotions, the adherent devotions, the exemplar devotions, there's a bunch of new ones on here. So we didn't save the best for last. We saved, you know, the trickster for last. So at your follower devotions, ranks one, two, three, and four, you have air speaking, conceal object, disguise self, both of those right there for deception, forgery, more deception, heart's wish. This is new. Is it new? I thought it was new. Well, it's new for this book. I don't know that we, I don't remember now whether we've covered it with other, I think Astendar might get it. It allows the questor to learn the subject's fondest desire. Right. Let's see if Astendar does get that one. Sorry. I would be very surprised if Astendar didn't get it. I do not see it here. Huh. Yeah, they don't get Heart's Wish. Do they get something that's equivalent? Um, let's see here. 
Asendar's muse, Asendar's voice. But other than that, no, they don't get they don't get Heart's Wish. So I thought it was new. I didn't think we talked about that one before at all. So let me check on. Uh, Corollas gets it. That's where. Okay, it's adherent for Corollas, which makes sense. Yes, totally. Sorry. <laughs> okay, I was like, I'm sure we had talked about that before. It's Corollas, not a Stendar. Been a while. Sorry, no worries. Yeah, um, nope, that's, Corollas was one of the first ones we talked about, so that was like three months ago. <laughs> that's uh, fine. Yes, and then Mimic Voice, which again is more deception. Uh, passions Empowerment, Resist Influence, Stealthy Stride, and Silence Influence. So again, this one's a lot oh, yeah. of tamp- tamping down other influences. Lots of stuff that plays into their assassin dark skulking figure in the shadows kind of position a lot of powers yeah a lot of devotions there in this in this follower tier that overlap with thief Mm -hmm. to a certain extent thieves are not necessarily always followers of corollas but there is a strong thematic link there (laughs) there's a venn diagram of the of the uh, yeah yeah so onto the adherent devotions we have uh assess intentions which I know we've covered before. Enchanted Gift, which we just mentioned a little while ago, and a bunch of questers have that. Fast Hand, which is always... Um, That's a thief talent. Yep. Insight. And scouts might have access to it as well. Yeah, I think so. Insight Obsession. I think we might have talked about it before, but not a lot of questors get it. We can revisit. It allows the questor to inspire somebody to be obsessed with something, whether that is an item, a person, a goal... Yes, because Corollas gets it as well. Yeah, Corolla. Amazing. <laughs> We're seeing some overlap here with, with Corollas, who is what? very strongly associated with greed and desire. Yeah. This is something that would be used by a questor of Vestrial to manipulate people into pursuing the ends that they want them to be. Yes. And then uh, further adherent devotions are Passions Insight, Passions Inspiration, Poisoned influence, because that's what you do. Yeah, poisoned influence is the um, diplomacy knack that basically makes people more in conflict. Mm -hmm. It's basically the anti-diplomacy. Sabotage. (laughs) Yeah. Well, I mean, diplomacy manipulates the attitudes of the two conflicting parties Mm -hmm. to make them more in line with each other. Poisoned influence does the opposite. It makes Puts them, them the instead spectrum. of moving them in a positive direction, it moves their attitudes in a negative direction. Yes. And then last adherent devotion, one of my personal favorites, sloth blame. Sloth blame. Can't Love go wrong one. with sloth blame. Not it wasn't me. Uh, and then exemplar of devotions. Again, ranks 9, 10, 11, and 12. And you only get four of these. Impossible hide, which sounds like it's a talent. That's a high circle thief talent. Yeah. Um, it allows the user to hide in circumstances that would otherwise be impossible. (laughs) Like you've got a lamp post. Yes. And a troll could hide, could actually hide behind the lamp post. It is physically impossible that they would be able to do it, but the magic of the ability allows them, as long as there is something that in theory is interposed between them and the viewer, Mm -hmm. a troll or obsidian could hide behind just a simple lamp post. Like yes. That's the basic gist of the talent. Or a sapling or the, tree. The devotion. Yes. And then, of course, one of my personal favorites from Monty Hall himself, let's make a deal. Yeah, Corollas also gets that. Oh, I yeah, know. It's just fun to say. Uh, and then Open Mind, which I believe uh, Minbruge also gets. Uh, yes, as as does um, Locust. Yes. So we've got three of those. Um, this, I think, is new, though. Taste of Power. I think only Vestrial gets that. Vestrial Questers get that taste of power i think oh no no ragok ragok gets it as well yeah yes, this space this allows the questor to tempt someone else into service of their passion mm-hmm. by temporarily granting them access to the questor's devotions ragok gets this as well because yes. ragok gets a bunch of stuff that would that is really cool to like i will grant <laughs> you power if you serve my dark master kind yes of thing but the other mad passion disc does not get that one no. No. <laughs> this is all about the mind control. Yeah. This is not about the... This breaks your will 
forces you to serve Dis by breaking your will <laughs> as opposed to being a little bit more subtle and tempting you. Yes. So I want to make the clear distinction on, on the, the mad, pa- pa- mad passion powers. Uh, and then let's see here. Undermine, which is always fun. Undermine is a high circle talent that uh, several of the uh, passions provide as an option for their questors. We've talked yes. about it before. And then the last exemplar devotion a quester of Vestrial might possibly get is the one unique to Vestrial only, Vestrial's tongue. It's bonuses to in the interact specifically to the interaction test deceit. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and either the the questor can use it on themselves or can use it on a target. Yeah, on another target. So, all in all, not bad. Um, uh, it also provides bonuses to interaction tests, uh, or it provides bonuses to talents that are also kind of related to deception, like engaging banter, mm-hmm. sloth blame. It provides bonuses to yeah. It's it's basically an enhancement to anything that would be deceptive. <laughs> uh, I, I would probably allow it to be used with um, maybe with uh, maybe with graceful exit. Depends, Depends on the on circumstances. The, I was going to say, yeah. but any any kind of situation where they would be using their social wiles to one extent or another to manipulate or deceive a target. Fair enough. So that kind of wraps up our six part series on the passions and the questers. Vestrial being the last one, just alphabetically speaking. Yeah. Any final thoughts on a the whole series or b just Vestrial? I've really enjoyed this series. <laughs> I have had, I've really, like, really enjoyed going over the passions and talking about each of them kind of more in depth and exploring the thematic, the thematic potential of them, the campaign potential of them, ideas of how you can use them as allies or adversaries or whatever. This is even more of the kind of stuff that I'm really happy with. That came out of the... The passions are supposed to be kind of a significant thing in bar save in a certain extent and even in fourth edition i don't think we have done as much to highlight that Mm -hmm. as i think could be done and i think part of that is just a sort of shortcoming of our perspectives and the traditions that go along with fantasy gaming yeah, and how the passions in general get relegated to filling the same role that deities do in other fantasy, other RPGs. Yeah. When they're not quite that, even though there are several aspects that you can use as inspiration to draw from for them. I have discovered things and made connections and noticed stuff going more in depth with the passions here in yeah. this series, this these <laughs> half dozen episodes, the, the six hours that we've talked about <laughs> in terms of overlap and all of the various aspects of that. I've, yeah. I've really enjoyed, I've really enjoyed it. I hope the people listening have really enjoyed it based on some of the questions we've got. We absolutely Oh, I have. I think so. And I hope that this information for the people listening is able to either enrich their own player character experiences or for mm-hmm. a game master who's running a game to bring the passions in to a larger extent and make them more of an aspect of uh, of a adventure or a campaign yeah. that just they a, might be running. Just a little bit more prominent in the bar save that you're running them through. I liked presenting just two at a time that way we could focus on them for half an hour a piece. And that way people could just fast forward you know, halfway through and find the next one. If they wanted to listen to that aspect of the, of the uh, uh, passions themselves. But I also just want to point out the questers book was one of the first books that differed from first edition, second edition and third edition. It was a standalone. This is our, f- one of their very unique fourth edition products. Yes. Every edition's had a player's guide, every edition's had a companion, every edition's had a game master's guide, and the other ones have had some setting books. This is the first one for fourth edition that had a standalone Questers book. So if you want anything to do with Questers, this is the edition you have to get it in. So I like that this was the, the new, we're going to do it in a little I mean, I mentioned, I mentioned when I came on and started yes. the development work on fourth edition, 
one of my high priorities in terms of a product was Quest Stores. Yep. And I think the book came out really well. So do I. I think it still shows some signs of the not quite as much experience. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, It's not quite as seasoned or mature a product in terms of the development team's ability to work on stuff as, say, Iopos or or Empty Thrones were. I think those are both books that are a lot stronger because they've got the experience of more years of work Mm -hmm. and understanding what works and what doesn't on them. But I'm still really happy with quest doors. I think if that is my, <laughs> if that is my longstanding legacy, legacy of the game yeah. uh, on, on, on the game setting, I'm, I'm happy with that. No, I am as well. It's like, it's not required, but I, I really strongly urge any fans of the game, especially if you're looking to bring quest doors and the Broaden passions that they character. represent into your game. To, to pick that up and look at what the essays inspire and some of the other discussions and things like that. I agree. Um, only because I've got two essays in there and I'm, I'm happy with that. So again, if that's my contribution to Earth on, I'm happy with those as well. So fine by me. Anyway, so folks, this wraps up our little six-part series on Passions and Questers. We will see you next time. If you have any questions for us at all, please feel free to email us at edsgpodcast at gmail.com. Any final thoughts, Josh, or is it t- just time to say goodbye? You know, one last thing. Oh, cool. I haven't been kind of poking on this so much lately, but if you are so inclined, it's really great if you could go on to iTunes or Google Podcasts or wherever it is that you listen to the show, wherever you get it from, yes. and rate and review and leave comments about it. It's really nice to see that sort of thing. Feedback. Yeah, feedback, you know, not just the emails to us, but also to go on to those places and leave your reviews. Yeah. Because that drives interaction. And if we, enough of that, if you listen to other podcasts as well, Mm -hmm. those sites will start to associate and might suggest us to people Uh, who had not had a chance to be exposed to us yet. So it'll spread the word. Yeah, it'll potentially it'll potentially spread the word. That's what we're looking for. New players, spread the word. Uh, until next time, folks, it is time for you to go put a little pin on the end of your legend, since this is the last of our series. Good night, everybody. <laughs>